getting your needs met. Okay, don't we all want to get our needs met? Okay, here we are. We're, that's what we're going to cover today. There, there, for the last 60 years, there's been a whole upside down of women's roles and this and what, nothing. I'm not commenting good, bad. I'm not saying that. But it's been imploding into our brain for, for, you know, since the 50s or whatever it was. So here we have a 3,000-year-old 3, 3, track record of success, okay, our traditional uh, 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 value system, whatever, of extraordinary happy marriages, of what a woman needs, of what a man needs, and how to make it work, okay? It got a little bit upside down because there's two aspects of getting your needs met. Okay, so I'm going to cover this, and yours is the second point, actually, that I'm going to be covering. Okay, so there are two aspects of getting our needs met. Um, one is understanding our needs. This is what Sarit started talking about when nobody could do the homework, okay? <laughs> understanding our needs. Now, here's the thing. If I were to get a spiral bound notebook with 500 pages, you know, whatever, this big fat thing, and I were to hand it out to each lady here and everybody in the audience, okay, now here you are, you got this big fat notebook, and I'm saying, ladies, here's a pen, pink pen, write down for me all, everything that you ever wanted from your husband. They'd be like, really? And I'm like, yeah, 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 just let her rip. And you'd write down, I want a new outfit every day. I want, you know, a new, uh, you know, I you give all your emotional, you know, your physical needs, all your emotional needs. I want him to not put me down in front of my mother-in-law. I want him to, you know, stop being so harsh with the kids. I want him to, you know, you'd go on and on and on. You'd write down everything. Okay, fine. At the end, you'd hand it back and you'd say, excuse me, Leia, um, could I get another notebook, please? <laughs> right? Okay. And not only that, when you look back on the notebook, a lot of those things will change because our wants change every 10 minutes. We get a new car and they're like, I should have got that one. Or we get a new, you know, whatever. Whatever it is we got, we're sure the other thing should have been it. So the wants, here's here's the newsflash, ready? Newsflash, this is like, okay, this is, let's, let's, let's uh, get Trump to tweet this, okay? The newsflash is getting what you want will never make you happy. It will never make you happy. Everybody's crying. They're taking out tissues here. Okay? It will never. I mean, this is news. I'm sorry. I know our whole culture is about, you know, looking at the billboards and going home and buying it and, you know, seeing somebody else on Facebook who has a thing that, oh, where'd you get that? And, blah, 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 and getting the Pinterest thing and blah, blah, I've got to buy that. They didn't have a link to buy it. Okay? We have been taught since the time we were in the womb shopping in our mother's stomach while she was shopping. Okay? We've been taught getting what you want will make you happy. Now, how many people have ever driven a new car? It doesn't have to be a brand new car, but it has to be a new car to you, right? You know that feeling? Like, yes. my old one had and the door always kind of jammed, and this one, the, you know, whatever, and the actual thing in the middle of the console actually opens and closes, like, you know, whatever, and you've got this gleeful feeling. It lasts about a week three weeks, maybe a month, maybe if you're really an appreciative type of person in the last six months, okay, fine, but I'm just saying, that's not happiness. That is a poor substitute for happiness. That is, it can be titillating to get what you need, what you want. It can be exciting and thrilling. Happiness, not so much. So what does have a chance of making us have happy? Getting just a few of our needs met. Just a few. Don't need huge, need, you don't need every little last need. Just a few of them met and all of a sudden we're in, we just feel content with our life. It's like a nap. Didn't, we didn't get this thing we wanted. We, we've been, this, uh, th our dining room table, every time you stick your, you know, pull your chair and then your knee hits the thing because it's just, it's like stupidly made and whatever. And you always want a new dining room table and the one you really want is just like crazy expensive. So you just, you're living with a table that you don't want. Annoying, fr frustrating, or whatever, and, and the, the, the table is nothing compared to emotional needs and not getting those met. But I'm just saying, getting your needs met. If your hus if you have a need for your husband to listen to you when you're upset, you know, and let's say your husband always is like, you know, yeah, fine, I'll listen to you later, all this or whatever, and you just don't feel connected or you don't feel like whatever. But that's really a need of yours. Okay, and I'm not saying you should have it. So everyone has different needs. Some people, when they when they feel needy, they they need space. So whatever. But I'm saying, let's say your need is you need when you're upset, 
as long as you can talk nicely and whatever, hopefully, but even if you can't, you need your husband to be there for you at that time. I'm telling you, if he is, you will care less about the stupid dining room table. It just won't even be an issue. You know, yeah, okay. <clears throat> Physical things are wants and emotional right. things are needs. But that's you're not right. true. You're right. You're right. That's yes. true. So you're I right. You're wanna, right. I'm, yeah. I'm making, I'm not as clear as I was two years ago when I talked. Right. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. About that. yeah. No, you're right. You're right. I'm giving the wrong impression and you're exactly wants. right. So an emotional need would be even something, um, or not an emotional need, a need for physical is, let's say, your husband, um, uh, you know, you're, you need your husband to do things around the house. I'm a acts of, acts of service. I'm an acts of service types of person. I like <laughs> when things are done in my house. That does not mean I want my husband to be a handyman, but I do. I, I, <laughs> But but if he did things, if right. he did things, if he you would like feel got more, physical yeah. and helped me with things, right. that makes me okay. feel so amazing. That's a need. Yeah. But let's yeah. Go back to what is an emotional? My husband doing things. No, no. Me. What is an emotional Physically. feeling that you might have in you that's not a need? It's a want. That's what I want an example of. Uh -huh. Oh, like like an example would be, um, uh, you know, her. That's not an emotional need. No, but let's say she I need my husband to bring me flowers or to say you look beautiful. That's physical. Well, okay, okay say, say you look, look beautiful, beautiful, right? Okay. I need, my husband to say, I need him to say you look pretty, you look beautiful. So, you think, so that's a want someone could just let go. It's not really a need. Right. It, it, it depends. Yeah, exactly. Now, obviously, all of them depend on the person, but I just think it's a little trickier when you're talking about an emotional feeling that you have. Like, I don't want my husband to put me down in front of, you know, somebody else. So, yeah, okay, that could be a want and I could let it go, but it could so also be a this, need. She's bringing up a crucial, crucial point, which is that there is. There are some things that you're going to let go that you actually do need also. Because the, the key here, here's, what, here's the plan. Let me give you the end game, and then you'll sort of see where we're getting to. The end game is to, and this is the, this is the actual homework we're going to do today, and I'm giving it early so you understand where our brain is going, how this whole work works out, is that you basically you do take a notebook and you write down all your wants. And as you're writing them down, you feel ridiculous because they're so ridiculous and there's so many of them. That's step number one. Step number two is start crossing out things that really are not a priority, that are kind of silly, that are not core to your long-term happiness. So once you have that list of wants crossed out, now you're starting to get really what you need. Now you end up with, you know, let's say, let's say you had 50 things on your list to begin with. That's, that's a lot for some people and not so many for other. And I had another student who said to me, say, wait a minute, if I list this all, everything I want is just going to make me more dissatisfied with my life. And I'm like, hello, you've had that list since you were a little girl playing with dolls. Okay. You've, those are there anyway. Let's get them on paper so we can at least laugh about them and cross them off. That's right. And cross them out and say I'm done with this. I'm done. So you let's say you come with, you know, you have 70 things on your list. You've crossed out. It's very hard to cross out. Now you're down to 30 and you're like, "Leah, I cannot cross any more." And we're trying to get to 5. Okay? It's very hard work. But at least as you're going down and maybe you'll put them a, these are A's, these are B's, these are C's. You know, everybody's got their own style and you have to work at what works for you. But what you're left with after this, and sometimes this, sometimes this takes an hour, sometimes it takes five hours, sometimes it takes 10 minutes here, an hour there, and two weeks later you have an actual good list. And I know some people aren't homeworky type of people like this or whatever, and some people are, so you have to know yourself. But the people who are meticulous and go through it, at least in their mind, and, and, you know, and are able to translate to their, how they're interacting with their husband, it's very powerful. It's possibly one of the most powerful things we do to shift our marriage because all of a sudden this beautiful thing, and it's okay, leave it. Uh, this beautiful thing happens, which is our husband is walking around. My wife is never happy with anything I do. No matter what I do, it's not enough. No matter what I give her, it's not the right thing. I'm just Pouring and pouring, you know, we know the, the biggest thing of standing on one foot, if you had to say, what are you, what's our masseur, what's our traditions for, for peace in the home? 
The husband's the giver. The wife is the receiver. Okay. My husband stopped giving years ago, Leah. He stopped giving. So here's the thing. When you hone down what your real needs are, what is the most crucial things for you? Lay off the wants. Let's say you've gone from 70 and you've gone down to 10. And then there's something that's like numbers 18, which is you really want to go on this vacation that you've been dreaming about and he kept promising and it never happens. Let it go. When you narrow it down to eight things, the poor guy has a chance of actually delivering. And do you know what it means to a man to give to you and have you receive it? It's oxygen. His whole self feels like the reason he was put on this planet is being fulfilled. This is no joke. This is not a joke. He was put here to give to you. And he's been knocking his head against the wall for 20 years, 10 years, 30 years, trying to give to you. And nothing he ever does is good enough. So how do we fix it? The way we fix it is by having an understanding. If we can limit our list to so small that he can actually do it. He is on fire. Now, I, I will tell you, it doesn't happen immediately because he's just so like unfamiliar with what it is to give and be and have it be received. So it's not an instant thing, but it's, it's pretty close to instant. It's pretty like whatever. Here's the thing. You're limiting it down to seven or eight things and keeping as many wants off your list as you possibly, possibly can. Even emotional need to get them met by your girlfriend. You're like, I need to talk to you. I'm upset. You didn't listen. You know what? Get your sister. Get, you know, your brother. Your, your, get somebody, you know, if you can. I'm just saying, limited, limited. So few needs. And when the more, the less, and we have like Masora for this. This is, everybody knows this. The less you, you know, who, who's happy? The man who, the one who um, is happy with his lot, you know? So if you can, if you can limit it down, he has a much better hit ratio. Then he can go boom, received, boom, received, you know, like that again and again and again. And when that dynamic is working, the, the relationship's on fire. It's just, it's just pure bliss, joy, happiness. It's ecstasy. It's phenomenal because he is doing what he was put on the planet for and you are doing what you are put on the planet for. Now, you have to tell him, right? What your needs meaning, are? Meaning he's not going to know it. And if he thinks your needs are one thing, you know, ever since our our class where we went into the whole light bulb thing and I went and I told him that I'm going to get the Javero and, you know, the other women to kind of do the light bulbs, he's literally, literally, I mean, it's been what? It's been almost a year. He literally, like, if a light bulb goes out, if he goes and he does it, it's like he knows that, yeah, yeah, and he'll but come and he'll tell me, did you know it yet? <laughs> said, Otherwise, tomorrow's coming up <laughs> with the group. We're here to fix your light bulb. No, but he like, he knows. Otherwise, I feel as though you're leaving them still not. Okay. Now, I will tell you, there are some things you share and there's some things you don't. So we're going to go over that because, you know, it, so first of all, this is like a shock to the system. You know, have you, you know, like when I, when it's daylight savings time, like it's like, it takes me a week. I'm sorry. I don't know what is wrong with my circadian rhythms. Like they need to get on page, but it's like when you're, there's a change in a person, you know, whatever, this is a shock to the relationship and it takes adjusting. But like she said, some of the things you're going to communicate, like, you know, I need the light bulb done. That's a need of mine. I just feel like I need to feel like my man is taking care of me. I just need that. Okay. Got it. Fine. But there are other things that are less I'm trying to think of an example that you wouldn't necessarily share. Like you need your husband to, um, I had a call in this week. So I was saying they feel very badly. Their husband's not going to pray regularly and it's, it, it bothers them. They feel like their, their house isn't 
taken care of and whatever. It's frankly actually not her business. And we'll get into that later, that, that what your husband does spiritually is, is his business. It's between him and God. What you do is between you and God. You can pray for him to grow in that area. And you can also do many, many things, which we will get into, uh, not the least of which is making him your Rebbe and asking him questions about how you should do this, how you should. And once he feels like your Rebbe, he'll run to show. But anyway, we'll get there. And once you're listening to his Devartor on Shabbos, that's the two-minute version of a long class that we'll get to. But, okay, but the issue is that, you know, her, she actually has that need. But if she were to tell him that and say, hey, and I think she's listening actually today. So thank you, Bez, there. I got your question. I know you had a couple of others. I'll try and cover them at another time. But I want to cover that for you so you got that one done. But here's the thing, that he, your husband, if you were to say to him, you know, it's really a need of mine for you to wake up at six o'clock in the morning and go, you know, to pray. You know, it's a little stretch. You know, if you want him to, that could be a need of yours. That's something we would work on in the background. Okay. I want to get to your question on. Thank you for the night. Not everyone's nodding their head. It feels so good. Actually, I'll give everybody a dollar to nod. It's re- <laughs> no, it really feels no, great. No, yeah. I'm t- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> That's it. Uh, what'd you say? Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, it's cute. Yeah, darling. Yeah, okay. So fine. Okay, so now, here's the thing we want to understand about this section, then we're going to get to expectations. Here's the thing. How do we expect our husband to know what our needs are? You know, this topic of the class, getting our needs met. How do we expect him to know what our needs are if we don't know what our needs are ourselves. If we don't know what our needs are, it, it's pretty unbelievable that we're totally disappointed, upset, angry, frustrated that our husband isn't meeting our needs. It's a good question. So that's where it comes in, doing that exercise of getting your wants down, crossing them out, narrowing it down. It's a beautiful exercise. Um, maybe if if you have a friend who you watch the show with or a fr- friend here, if you're having struggling with this, grab a fr- grab a friend and just say, let's do this together. Let, I'm sitting down. I'm having lunch with you. We're going to get sushi. We're going to whatever. We're going to sit down and do this together. Be very, very careful because you don't want to say any Lushen Hara, any gossip about your husband. Bad news. Really very devastating. And actually, uh, Rebetzin uh, uh, Kamenetsky, this is a, 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 um, a Shmuel's wife, Rebetzin Kamenetsky. Anyway, she... Um, Oh, we got somebody. Yeah, thank you. Someone took, got a phone call or something. Uh, she said that the most important thing about all of the work we're doing is that there's no lush and hara, no gossip about our husbands. So where it's fine to go to a rebbitzin or a rabbi or a therapist or your husband himself or one really trusted confidant who is who is like the type of person, if it's the kind of person who says, uh, oh, I can't believe he did that. Wrong person. If it's the kind of person who says, ooh, I see your side, but I could see his side too. That's the kind of confident, but that's it. So if you, it's very, very crucial and very important to our work that, they, that we don't say gossip about our husband to other people and don't talk about our private relationship with other people. However, for doing this exercise, it's not like you're going to you're gonna say, well, my husband never got me this, and that's why I want to get a pretty dress. He never buys me things. No, that would be gossip. But if you're saying, you know, I, I, I have a need for more dresses, you know, or something like that, then you write those down. So be very careful with that. With, with that caveat, it's if you need that partnering up with somebody to make this actually happen, it's a very powerful exercise. Okay, let's get to the next point, which is the two things to getting your needs met. Number one is understanding what your needs are. Hello. Okay, thank you. The number two is understanding your expectations. Okay. And as she said, we all come into marriage with a heap loads of expectations that our husband does as well. Okay. So your, um, oh, we got a ghost. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Um, okay. So, um, ah, have a seat. There we go. Welcome. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so the question is, 
if we have certain expectations of marriage, I'll tell you where some of them come from. Some of the expectations that we have are we're sitting at somebody's house and the husband comes in and he says, hi, can I get you something to eat, dear? Would you like something to drink? Well, my husband never says that. Or he says, um, oh, she says, oh, d dear, what should I do? Should I, should I, you know, th there's a blue dress and a green dress. I can't decide. I should get both. Oh, thank you, dear. Right? So then we, what do we have? That, what does that do to our level of expectation? Forget about it. Right? So here's the problem with that kind of thinking. Behind the scenes, the first husband is like, you know, Ugh, you could never do anything right. You never, you don't cook right. You don't this, you don't want, he's constantly criticizing her. Now there's guests in the house and he comes in and says, can I get you something to eat? Would you like something to drink? All we see is the sugary candy coated stuff of reality. Or we see their Facebook posts or we see their Instagram of their beautiful meal. Forget about that, you know, the, the, they had to snap at everybody to get that picture, okay? <laughs> Yeah, that's another whole topic. Okay, but we're not going there. Okay, so no, many people do this and it's very, you know, it's a nice creative outlet, but it also you have to be careful if you're, if it's hurting those you love, you have to be very careful that you have to have your priorities straight. What's most important and the people are more important than pictures. Okay, we got that. Okay, I just made that up. That's good. We should make a yeah, whole yeah. thing so campaign about that. People are more important. <laughs> so, okay, so anyway, so the other, the second person, what was the second example I gave? of the husband that what we're seeing. Oh, buy two dresses, you know? So she's like, you know, you see, oh, he said, oh, buy two dresses. Meanwhile, he might be very generous with a pocketbook or maybe she brings it home and says, return both. I don't like either of them. He's very picky or something. Or maybe he's very generous with a pocketbook, but in other things, he like, he never does light bulbs or whatever. It, we're seeing such a myopic, what, how do you translate myopic? Uh, whatever, such a, one little, it's like, see, here's narrow a narrow lens. lens. Thank you. It's like we're seeing one little factor. I have a, always have a hard time. I talk with my hands and these things are exactly where I need to be. Thank you. <laughs> but if I move them out here, he says you can't hear them and I can't get them any closer. So, okay, they're, they're going to have to talk out here like a weirdo. Okay. So here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing is that we're seeing one little thing and our expectations go through the roof. Now, when I used to work a lot with single people, I used to help them now they're, like you're saying, a list of what they should be looking for, or whatever. Here's how people would make their list. It's called the smorgasbord syndrome. It's in one of my, in my book, Dating Secrets. and talks about this. They go to their Uncle Bill, and they're sitting there, and they're like, oh, he's so, look how he cooks, and look how he speaks to his wife, or whatever, so they write that on their list. Then they go to somebody else who is, you know, brilliant in business and talking about this, and no, 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 and she's so enthralled with his business. Anyway, she puts together this smorgasbord of that aspect of this one, and this is this, this, right, right? Uh, and, and by the time you finish, a human being, what'd you say? Man. Perfect man, perfect man. Exactly. By the time that human being, by the time she has her list, it doesn't exist. You could go, you could interview a million people. This person does not exist. And it's exactly what we've done with our expectations of our husband. The poor guy. The poor guy. He's not like the way our dad is in this. He's not the way our brother is in that, etc., etc., etc. And so we walk around, guess what? The saddest thing? We walk around horribly disappointed not the man I thought he was in my fan crazy fantasy of the smorgasbord. And so we're sad for a reason that is not a reason. It's understandable. We all do it. Thank you, myself included. Okay. But it's a huge mistake that costs us our own happiness and makes us perennially disappointed with our husband. So here's where this comes into getting our needs met. We think he should be Bill and Uncle Sam and Joe and our brother and our father and whatever. And he isn't. So he's not meeting our needs. They're not really needs. They're wants. Very important. A couple of things more about expectations to get into your head about how do you teach your children. So everybody, everybody knows the answer I'm about to give, which is, what's the best way to teach a kid anything? Example. Okay. So if you grow yourself to somebody who knows what their needs are, 
guess what? By osmosis, your children will do the same. And if you have a million expectations for your husband and you're always disappointed in him, your kid will be have a million expectations of their spouse and not know what their needs are and keep demanding and demanding and demanding. And we're passing along this congenital disappointment, <laughs> okay? This, you know, he, they're going to be disappointed because we're disappointed. So our level of contentment in our marriage is going to totally shine. They're going to be, okay, so here's the thing also, to be chill about how you raise your kids and the expectations you have on your children. Now everybody gets a trophy, so it's not like, you know, it's very different in, in generations past. But there is this level of expectations and of disappointment with our kids, okay? Meaning what they're doing is never good enough. It's not like the neighbor. It's not like this one. And they learn to feel this sense of disappointment in who they are. So the other thing is when you are having expectations of your husband, and I'm going to get to wh wh where do you drop the bar to, okay? Because if you have no expectation, the kid won't grow and your husband won't, you know, whatever. So you have to have minimum, what is it? Minimal viable product, right? Minimal viable expectations, okay? That's probably where we're going from here. But, but the question is, if you have expectations of your husband, how do you feel this is for everybody listening. How do you feel when your husband has unreasonable expectations of you? You come home and you've got bags and you've got thing and you whatever and you paid the you paid the the parking ticket and you this happened and whatever and you walk in the thing. He's like, oh, is, is, did is dinner ready? You're like, if you if you were a, a camera on my you know if you were listening in on my phone the entire day and you watched and heard everything I did you wouldn't even be a, 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 a able to you know uh, sing my praises loudly enough of what I accomplished today and yet they pick on one thing that they expected of you that you didn't do okay so this is a very very daily good lesson for you to understand how our husbands feel probably on a lot bigger way because the husband has, um, boy, I got myself into a pickle here. Okay. I'm just going to explain it quickly. Uh, a, a woman has expectations of her husband because her whole, she's a relationship being. And so, you know, if her life's not working right, it's obviously, obviously her husband's fault, right? I mean, like, hello, right? If any, if they, whatever's wrong in your life, it's your husband's fault. That's the, go-to position for most women, okay? If you're different, send me an email, how you do what you do, okay? Because <laughs> it's very rare, okay? But most women, that their relationship being and focusing on that. Men, on the other hand, they've got, they've got different areas. Women do too. I'm not saying, and women are at work and they're powerhouses at work, okay? I know a lot of very high-level people who, that you know, but at the end of the day, they are much more focused on relationships than men are. That's just the way we are created, and I have many sources to back me up on that. Um, and everybody's different. You could have people with, you know, have a more of a male side, and a guy who has more of a female side. So, you know, but I'm just in generalizations. It's very useful to use generalizations. Can kind of be bad, but it's also very useful to use generalizations because then you can sort of measure like how you want to be, where you want to grow, what is typical. I just got an email from another. I think it was the same lady who uh, um, uh, asked, asked the other question, and she said that it's so heartening to hear that she's not the only one feeling the way that we all feel. So that's in that sense, generalizations are good. Okay, back to the issue, which was, does anybody remember what, I, what point I was making? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Unrealistic expectations. So the more we tone down our expectations, the better off we're going to be. And um, both in terms of our expectations of our husband and what they see in the home, and our expectations of them, and how about this one? Our expectations of ourselves. We are so hard on ourselves. We're so hard on ourselves. And we do something that, you know, some things we know how to do and then we just don't do it or we flub it or whatever. And 
you know, it's kind of like when if someone does something to you, you're so annoyed. Oh, I can't believe that she, you know, she said she was going to be here on time and she wasn't and because of that. This and that and the other happened. You know, we, 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 we didn't get to the wedding on time or whatever it is. When it's us, because we just got caught up, you know, put, you know, one eye, eyebrow, we're tweezing and we're like, ah, what happened to the time or whatever it was. When it's our fight, fault, we beat ourselves up mercilessly. So in terms of expectations, if our children see, we're less expectation of daddy, we're less expectations of them, we're less expectations of ourselves. And we just chill in that arena. It's the best you can do, the best education for our children. Good. Any further comments or questions? I'd love to hear from the people on the call. Is there anybody who would like to actually get a little bit of coaching, coaching on getting their needs met? Hit star six, right? Is that what they do, Sarita? Yeah. yeah, okay, okay. Okay, so let's go to, I have questions for you. My first question is, what can we do to manage our own expectations and disappointments that those expectations are not being met. Sure. What can we do to manage our own expectations? I mean, I gave a bunch of answers, but I'd love to hear any, if anybody else has more input for, for the other ladies here. You got one cooking. I'm just thinking in relation to a child. If you want to do behavior modification on a child, you give them a chart, whether it's keeping the room tidy, and then anytime they keep the room tidy, they get that praise, they get a point on the chart towards earning something. You're not going to go ahead and give your husband a chart, <laughs> but I, I think that um, I think that, that recognition of, hey, I really appreciate that you took out the garbage today, thank you. And just sometimes you have to remind yourself to give other people a compliment too and recognize when there's the good, not just, you gotta look for the good. And that's what I keep hearing that's all the time. Perfect. You gotta look for the good, it's beautiful. And it's, it, yeah, it's like giving them positive reinforcement. And it's also, in a sense, when you're doing that, it's changing them and their, what's going on with them, but it's also training you to see your, the glass half full, you know? Rather than, you know, feeling like life isn't working, you know, and that they're not, and they didn't do this and they didn't do that, recognizing all they did do changes us, which is really crucial. It's beautiful. Thank you. It's good. Who else? Anybody? Sarit, you are far too quiet yeah. today. You know, I told you, I'm not, I don't have the needs and wants things. They're all wants. The, yeah, I want everything. <laughs> so... <laughs> My poor husband. Yes, I. Uh, I have a lot of wants. I, I'm sorry. I have a lot of needs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you yeah. have a hard time with this. I have one. a hard time with this. Yeah, I do. I do because my needs are constantly changing. Well, what I think are my needs are constantly changing, and I expect him to go with the changes. So, you know, once he's got one thing down pat, there's something else that comes up. So, you know, he's got the acts of service now and <laughs> there's a whole bunch of other ones. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely working on that. And I think it's because I'm that way myself. I have a lot, a lot, a lot of expectations of myself and I'm always trying to, I'm an overachiever and I'm always trying to do it all. So for example, this morning he, he, when he woke up, he said to me, I really need to get back on schedule and get things, you know, just certain things I want to get done. I feel like I'm just not getting them done and I need to really get back on track. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, no, I don't have that problem. You know, I'm up at six and then I'm on my, you know, my spin bike and I t already took care of the kids and I prayed and I got the kids out. I was like, I have all these expectations on myself and I, Make I'm very big into like I have to meet them. You mean you're driven, to, right? For sure, it's not fair. Hundred percent. Wait, yeah, say that again. What? Yeah. 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 You know, be there because yeah, I know. So I, I, I rain that's something. That, rain oh, rain, yeah, yeah, rain. yeah, 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 yeah. So that's why when you know when my lovely friends who I love dearly sitting in this room told me that it's a wonderful thing to wake up for you know Nate's 
and Davin for Nate, that's been my thing. And now I'm, I have to wake up even though I'm exhausted and I went to sleep at two o'clock and I don't want to be waking up at six. No, no, no. She told me all the time. So it's, this is my, the way I am. And because I'm like that, I transfer that to my husband. To other people, I'm a lot more lax. Everything? Yes, yes, that's, so thank you, thank you, thank you. So she need people mm. need to stop talking to me now. <laughs> no, you need to know what works for your life. If you're yeah. going to be tired and crabby, then it's not, you know. You're right, I agree, I agree. That's what I'm trying to say. That's why I have such a hard time doing it. That's why I have such a hard time doing so, wants so and needs. Also is like you have this whole list that you accomplish. Yes, and, correct. And then it's your kids that you ask them to do one thing. Right, and they can't and they do can't it. they can't even do that right. one thing. Exactly. Or your spouse. Or your spouse. It's, like, like, oh, it's not I'm even that right. they're expected to do right. those, li right. you know, the five 100%. things. One. I mean, you, we've done like 11 things and right. them not doing one thing. Like they do that one thing. That's what I'm trying to tell you. you agree what? She's saying I'm a capable person, but that's... But that's what I expect everybody to be able to, because it takes her nothing or like five seconds or everything's so easy for her to do. She expects everybody else to have and the I, same yeah. pace, the same pace. Especially, you are Wonder Woman, you are Wonder Woman, and you have your team of superheroes. She's very talented, right? That right. they're not doing their job. They're not so <laughs> <laughs> the superhero is my husband. My poor man is not doing his job. Like, do, like right. some of the things that she considers like everyday ABCs. Right. 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 To her, they're considered a failure because they can't even like do like Correct. half of what she's doing. And it's very, and I feel bad it, on certain things because it's, it it translates into so many areas of my life, like even pain tolerance. I just not you, Baruch Shem, thank God. I literally don't nothing brings me down. So in terms of physically sick, if there's a pain or whatever, I'll just go right through it. So when yeah. someone no, so when my husband Let's is no, her, so when okay? no, so Everybody. when my poor husband <laughs> is right, is feeling something and he can't even, he's like looking at me like she's so not going to be okay. sympathetic. And it's mm. I agree. You have to stop yes. and say to yourself, yeah. if I drill my husband or my kids Correct. to be like me, right. I'm not getting where Correct. I want to go. I'm going backwards. I am the first so, person who says okay. I know that. So then at that point, the opposite. So he's yeah. not like. And some kids, oh, her husband, husband or kid. Yeah, your kid. Your husband is usually the opposite of you. Yeah. If you're yeah. Yeah. Are yeah. 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 So so trying to knock me down. No, no, no. I don't think it's trying to knock you down. I think you. I think he's trying like, to bring me down. Meaning, no. I think not... you have to realize that as much as your lifestyle, you're making it work for you. There's a lot of value in the way Correct. your husband or yeah. your children are doing yeah. it, and yeah. also for them, yeah. they can't yeah. turn into you tomorrow. Yeah, they right. have to go through their right. whole journey right. Right. in life to learn what works and doesn't work, and that's their growth and their. So I have so a question. Right. I have a question. But that's why it's such a hard time with the ones and totally needs because they just keep. Piling. Piling and moving and changing and, and well, I change wants. with them. Those are yes. wants. Let's, let's for the numbers. Right, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. Right, exactly. So, right. So, let, let me just ask you, Sorry, let me just ask you this. So, is your sense, what is the, no. But, she's flat right now. One, two, one, that's, okay, so so here's the question I have for you. Here's the question: Is your drive to accomplish? <laughs> she's got, yeah. <laughs> she got her funny book. Uh, actually, actually, when he dropped me off, he's like, "Are you going to try to create a story now in the car?" Like, I just, like That's because really funny. Yeah, that's really cute. That's real, it's actually it happens to be true. So, but no, but hold on. I, I just wait. Time out, guys. I just have to ask you one question. The, I, I, the drive for getting stuff done is that for self actualization, or is that for a sense of uh, like uh, that's what I want to find out. I'm not sure I understand the motivation of you. Your I, I get the drive. I know it. I, I'm a beneficiary of your drive. You're awesome. But what what is the your self identity of being a with it person, a person on top of thing? What is it? What is it? I've always been. I, I was in college taking a class, and I literally had gotten an A plus. There was nowhere else for me to go in the class, and there was one last assignment. And he goes, "You don't have to do it." because you're done. You have your A+, you don't have to do it, it's an extra. 
and I had kids and my family and I went and I did this assignment and to bring it in. It was like, there was no reason for me to do it. So, mm -hmm. so, it's, so what, what, okay, let's, let's figure that out. What was it about that sentence? No, <laughs> no, I just want to understand. I don't understand. I don't understand why that, what, why you brought that paper in. Yes. Yeah, I want to be the best. Correct. Yes. To the fullest extent. Yes. She's not looking for exits. Right. Right. He's not looking for what? An exit. An exit. Right. And then when things don't work out like that, it's very hard. Yeah. Yes. When things don't work out like what? When things don't work out the way I see it. No, no, no. But yeah, but in in you mean if you in many things like. When my my when I have an expectation of where I want my son to be and he's not the poor boy, I have this expectation of him. He's not what I expected. So it to me, it's like it's the worst. Meaning, it's not like so. He doesn't show up like your pictures of him. Yeah, yeah, he's not the picture I have in my head of what I wanted. I did all the stuff. I followed all the like. I followed all the books and all. I agree. But I'm saying I followed all the books and all the steps and did all the things and took all the classes and did all the right things. And so the end product is supposed to turn out a certain way. And then product she didn't. I know. I you know, this, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying I know that. I right. know I internally. You know it illogically but not emotionally. Correct. Sometimes, mm -hmm. and I do. There are times and with my work and obviously with the work in the book the last two years that I am working through many of that things. But those are things that are still, I'm saying this wants and needs where I have such a hard time with it because I can follow the homework. So but when it comes to this, I have a hard time. So there's a, there, there, you're co collapsing two different concepts and we co cover them very, very separately. One is wants and needs and the other is control. I'm going to do right. a oh, lot here yes. about control. <laughs> okay. Yes. Hello. Hello. We're going to yes, do a lot. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> huh? What'd you say? Yeah. This is what. Okay. another one of my big problems. So, the control. So. so <laughs> we're, Right, they kind of do. So the thing is, we're separating them out because when they're separated and we're dealing with them separately, two things happen. One is you have some more insight into what your own what where what are your happiness buttons? What makes you happy? This is so crucial. And all of this is separating emotional and intelligence, yeah. and that's yeah. where we all the have head, our head and the heart. The head what was your? Yeah. Oh yeah. So I actually have been grappling with a problem like that the past two weeks. Um, several times my husband was so helpful and he volunteered to do things like put together an Ikea table or help me put together the shop months for Purim. But while he was doing it, he was getting so frustrated. And I felt like I'd rather you not even do it if you're going to bring this atmosphere of frustration and being upset about it into the house. So I'm that. trying to like understand if that's my need to like have him be happy and peaceful as opposed to having him do things or how to deal with it when he gets frustrated. Wow. Perfect. You hit the nail squarely on the head. That's what we're dealing with. That's what we're dealing with. I have a caller. Okay. Um, okay. Open. Your um, caller, your, Thank your line you. is that, open. Do you see what you did? You, you brought it very concrete. Right, yeah. so you now know how you're going to deal with it? Here's how to deal with it. You're going to make your wants list. You're going to cross it down. You're going to go, go, go. And you're going to see, is that one of the top eight things, five things, 10 things, whatever? Is that really, really how important is it to you if he's happy, not happy, whatever? You'll see. Oh, you know what? It's really important to me, but there are 10 things ahead of it. It's like it just went, fell down to number 19. So I'm going to have him do it, and he's going to be grouchy, and that's the way it is. So that's the way you know. He even said to me, like, this is my personality. I yeah. didn't say But Fantastic. that's he's, he's very elevated. That's awesome. Yeah. Changing about it. Right. Which is fine. So you have to see what you, you, you will know as soon. Here's the beauty of this. Leave the house. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But here's. I'm here. sitting there trying to be his Azer Connect though and like just yeah. swallow all the negativity, but like still help him yes. when he needs you to hand him the hammer. Yeah. 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 No. No. So just let him, like you said, leave the, go do something do else. But okay. here's the beautiful thing. Once you know this. Now he can actually do it 
or not do it. You know, you make your decision, say, okay, I'm going to have him do it, and this is going to be, and you know, my need is to have him be chipper. He's not chipper. Okay, that's a want. Uh, okay. Right. It won't bother you so much because right. the other thing that you put in number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven are are getting met, and it's so satisfying. You're like, okay, this is this is the what this is the, the the husband god gave me someone was saying something over here yeah hold on just the, uh, okay. oh, the yeah. line you are um you're unmuted so you can ask your question or make the comment hello I, I don't is it do i need to turn this yeah, on think, or something yeah, i think the speakers is it on uh, okay. working cuz yeah cuz they're they're on um they're unmuted oh so. i think i just turned it off i don't know what i'm doing here is that it? Okay, we'll try that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, caller, we do. Hello? I thought I just heard something. Maybe, can you type it in? C type in your question or comment? No, they're on the teleconference. So oh. they're on a call. Oh, they can't call. Yeah. They, they can't type. No, they're not muted. They're on Are they muted. muted from your side, star six? Did you hit star yes, six? St no, yeah, because they're in it. They're in. Engaged. So yeah, why isn't it coming it. out? Oh, um, so I'm sorry about that. Hello. Oh, Whoa, that yay. scared me. Yeah, we I hear you. Yay. You're on. Okay, hi. I'm Victory's sister. Oh, wow. Oh, yay. Oh, wow. We missed you. <laughs> We haven't heard from you from a, for a long time. This is so nice. I love when you come on when I'm putting myself down and saying what a perfectionist I am. <laughs> okay, so go ahead. What's your What's your question or point or comment? First point, um, in terms of the expectations, I always tell with the girls in my class, you know, when we put this in there, thinking our husband to be Prince Charming, that to appreciate the right thing and say the right thing, have to stop thinking like that. We have to start. Like, stop. What is this? I, I'm having a hard time. Mm -hmm. What'd you say? Are you there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So st say it again. You have so to. We have to stop thinking like that. Yeah. You have to start thinking like. Stop thinking that your husband is going to be like the guy in the movie. Like, like, stop thinking he's like the guy in the movies. Yeah. And start letting just like don't have all these expectations. Because then it really upsets them when their husbands aren't being so Right. Um, and also, in terms of a question, it was a girl in my class had that question. She was saying that her husband laughed, but if she asked him for something, she had a very silly thing, what he was thinking I can't understand. You're getting it. Mm -hmm. You know her. <laughs> oh, she, mm. did you go? Hello. Yeah, hi. So basically, your this this person was saying that she asks her husband for certain things that she feels like uh, she needs, like taking out the garbage, and he doesn't do it. Will meaning he doesn't do it. He he does it with griping. He puts up a fight, meaning he's not, that's what she needs from him is for him to do certain acts of service. And when he does them, he gripes. He gripes. Okay, fine. So here's the thing. Yeah, for her, for her uh, and then we have to wrap up because we're at the end of our time. So I'm just going to give you a quick standing on one foot thing is that you have, is that her, if that is one of her top five or six things or seven things, then it needs to be handled. If not, first of all, if she knows what her top seven things is, and I don't think you're, she's a facilitator, which means she teaches marriage secrets mm -hmm. in a group, at, and you are welcome to do it. We welcome you. We hope that you will take this on, or you'll find a, somebody in your community or, you know, a friend or whatever to teach this. So she's, she's, she runs a group. So, uh, what you, I don't think you got up to the part where we talk, where we, you're at this. Maybe you're at this already, but basically, if she has her top seven things, her needs met, and this is not one of them, then it'll hopefully lessen its impact on her and her desire and her need for it. If it's one of her top, let's say it's number four on her list, that she needs him to not gripe, then she needs to work on every aspect, and we'll get to the communication sec section, of how to communicate this to your husband in a way he can hear and becomes motivated to meet your needs. And I will tell you one thing. It could be you need a three-hour conversation about it, but more than likely, if you have let go of a 
dozens and dozens of wants and you only have a few things you're acquiring of him uh, she has to put star yeah, six yeah, yeah, back yeah, yeah, on yeah, yeah, um it, 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 if you um if and, and you only have a few things he's going to do them with with you know with, with 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 a full heart if you've let a lot of the other stuff go so uh sometimes you don't even have to tell the husband and have a big long drawn out drama with him it won't because he'll be right, so. well what happens if that's not his if her need is not he can't provide or it's not his, his needs my let's say acts of service i love when he does things for me right it's not necessarily his thing or like she Doing was saying light bulbs is hard for him but right. he does it because exactly he and that's what god that's gave him and that's how it will come out yeah but if i say even if i need it look like she's saying i want your help i want you to help me build this ikea thing but he's not really interested so is there a way to navigate that where she could say to him maybe we'll Right. Now, do you so want us to hire there someone? Is a, to there is a whole thing, thing we don't have time to get into, but there is a sort of thing. How important is it for for you that I build this IKEA well, thing? Ask him to do like yeah, that's true. But let's say, let's say it was a more regular thing. I, it really means a lot to me to, that when you take out the garbage, and I'll say on a scale from one to ten, how much does it mean to you? And if you if you say, well, like a three or a four, he said, well, under, and then you say to him, how hard is it for you on a scale from one to ten? And he said like 10 it's like my worst i'll do anything i'll clean your car i'll wash <laughs> okay. your car i'll take your car That's out for gas but you know those are like numbers and threes and fives or whatever but the garbage the smell i i don't know i have bad memories from when i was a kid whatever it is that's a good way to sort of judge how important it to, is to you versus him. Now, if he's saying everything's a 10, okay, and you're saying everything is a 10, I need it, you know, you got a problem. You got to really be willing. You right. got to be as comp, co right. cooperate and co compromise like that. Okay, let's okay. get to the homework. Very good. Excellent, excellent input today. Our wrap up for the day knowing what your needs are is, your, is the secret to getting those needs met. And knowing and, and knowing what the expectations are holding you in between. Now we have a three week break between now and Passover because I not only don't I think that our, our ladies here won't be able to make it, but I think a lot of people will be too busy to sit down for a class with Passover here. So that's yeah. it. <laughs> Everybody, there yes, we go. Yes. She, her husband will do it. Now, okay, so the homework, we're gonna spend our vacation break gaining insight. I'm not giving you too much homework because it's Passover, but gaining insight on the clarity and of what your needs are. So it's just as you're doing things and you're like, can you scrub the sink? Oh, that's a want. Okay, let me, you know, or whatever. Like think about very, very clearly, just have an eye on your needs and your wants. If you want extra credit, it's actually to sit down and make a your list start making your list of wants and fill that big fat notebook okay start filling that out and then work on getting your needs met if you you can take the next three weeks and do that you will see a huge shift not only in your marriage but in yourself in terms of your contentment in life we think we need all that we want all this you think everything everything could, but you know what there's only a few things and getting those things you can actually sort of that feeling we all have where you're kind of not really exactly content with the way your life's going or the way something is you know so the things you have or the person you have or the place that you live or the car that you drive or the you know the way somebody treats you whatever when you start getting down to it and bearing it down and narrowing it down and focusing, it's quite astounding how happy we can be with what we already got and what God already gave us. Okay. This is the ladies. April 14th. We're back April 14th. Fantastic. We'll see everybody Wednesday, 11 o'clock, April 14th, 11 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Thank you so much for joining us. We love having you. It's the Ladies Talk Show. I'm Leah Richheimer. This is uh, Marriage Secrets, and uh, we look forward to what? Go get it. Go get it. You have three weeks to read it. Okay. Bye. Thank you so much for being here.